Here we go. Hi, everybody. Welcome to our talk tonight, our live Zoom talk. Uh, tonight, we're going to have a talk on the legend and the wonder of beeswax. There's so many things that we can do with beeswax, and we've got the perfect... Oh, no, we've lost you. I don't know if oh, Beware yeah. is going to tell us a lot about beeswax. Did you? Hello. Yeah. You're back. You're back. Am I back? Okay, yeah. can you hear me? Right. So we've got the perfect, perfect person to, to tell us all about beeswax, uh, Mr. B himself, Warwick Salsa. Over to you. Thanks, Tanya. Yeah, it's, it's great to be back. We're, we're, it's our second one for the month, and I don't know, I think we're on episode 20 now, so that's awesome. Woo! Double, <laughs> we're way into the double figures. So welcome, everybody, and uh, yeah, thanks for joining us today. It's been, it's been a crazy month with Easter and all the holidays and and everything going on but uh yeah i think it's um it's still it's, it's there's still some more to come right there's some more holidays i think but anyway here we are farmers don't have holidays i have oh. no idea <laughs> it's only the kids that end up with holidays little do they know you know how much how much joy it is for them to actually have to to have school right because we were worked it out the other day there's three months of holidays for them a year and then you grow up and you become an adult. And then if you're lucky, you get three weeks. It's like this massive difference in time, right? Time off. And uh, I don't know if they get to, I don't know if they fully appreciate the, the opportunity they have, you know, in that time to, to really, to make things, uh, you know, to take advantage of things, of that situation. But anyway, um, to really do things that they'd like to be passionate about rather than just sitting in front of the TV, maybe perhaps, you know, most of the time or on their phones ridiculous crazy anyways tonight's story is the legend the wonder the amazing beeswax guys so thanks for joining us i'm warwick from beware and uh, we've been in business for about 16 years now 17 17 years and uh, i started off just with the love of pet and the passion of bees it was amazing and uh, ever since then i've literally been stung and uh, many times actually over <laughs> but uh, also as far as um, the passion goes. So yeah, what we wanted to talk about tonight is beeswax. I think so many people, uh, A, if they're in the beekeeping business or our beekeepers tend to, to throw their beeswax away, which I think is like sacrosanct. It's like, what are you doing? You know, um, a lot of people don't understand, don't realize, don't recognize maybe just, just from a point of, of, of not knowing, you know, what you don't know what you don't know, uh, what you can do with beeswax. So we're going to talk about a couple of things, namely the history of beeswax, some of the phenomenal, weird, crazy, out there stuff about the history and the legend of beeswax. And then we're going to talk about the products and uses and benefits. And then we're going to talk about the wonder of beeswax, okay? Why it is that you should be using beeswax. You should have it as a homesteader. You should have it even if you aren't a homesteader and you're living in the city, all right? Uh, I think you're going to be blown away. So watch this space um somebody wants a recipe adele okay we'll get to that in the end adele okay cool question we'll talk about some some basic recipes at the end all right awesome so here's some history guys okay beeswax usually was just collected you know beekeepers weren't a thing <laughs> if you go back into the ancient days i'm talking like probably over a thousand two thousand years ago you know even pre-egyptian times and uh, uh, pharaoh times Beeswax, beekeepers weren't the thing. Uh, what we used to do is be uh, um, hunter gatherers and we used to do the same thing. We used to be honey hunters, okay? Now this still continues in places like Asia and India, Pakistan, that kind of area. There's still hunting going on also in South America. And literally what happens is they find, you know, people find a bee, a beehive and usually it's, the, it's, it's by using um, birds, interestingly enough. And that still happens today. You can actually follow... Uh, um, uh, bird hunters, uh, sorry, bee hunters, and um, and they actually follow. If you follow them, you, you then can find out where the bees go. Unless you're a really quick runner and you can actually run after bees with, and follow them as they. You can do that too. A lot of a lot of a lot of people used to do that before they figured out how to follow the uh, the, the bee hunter birds. But anyway, uh, hunter gatherers and honey gatherers and honey hunters used to be able to literally just find a hive. And they'd go collect the, the beeswax from there and then start using it. Um, and then followed, obviously, things. People started to do that. 
uh, all over Asia, all over the world, really, to be honest with you. And unfortunately, what ended up happening in the Western world uh, is that churches got seriously involved with uh, wanting beeswax and making candles. And in some cases, especially in the, in the, in the UK and uh, across the large sort of, you know, Italian, Italian uh, based uh, Catholic system, as far as Christian um, uh, uh, churches and that sort of go, used to have a situation where, uh, again, you know, a lot of the monasteries used to keep their own bees and watch their own forests and all their own, their own areas around those uh, monasteries to ensure that the bees had food. But what ended up happening over time in Europe is that a lot of, as the populations grow, cities grew, guess what they did to the forest, the natural forest they grew. So over about a period of about 500 years, five, dec five centuries, uh, most of the most of the the, the local um, forests, natural forests, were all decimated, which meant most of the bees that were in those forests were also decimated. So what this caused was a, was a, was a, an economic upsurge in the in the price of beeswax, uh, because why? Before electricity, what did you light? You know, what did you use for light at night? You usually would get your light during the day, moonlight at night. You'd have your fireplace in the hearth, and or you would have beeswax. Problem is, is if you've got no forest, you've got less bees, which means you've got less beeswax. And so this drove a massive move into, um, into the trade and um, price hike of beeswax in the day, especially when you had an increase in use of churches across the whole of Western Europe, basically, and most of Europe, actually, from that perspective. I mean, some churches, even in, in, um, in cathedrals, were burning up to 1,300 candles a day. Uh, so you can imagine. Eventually, what ended up happening is that as the, as the economy of this grew, um, beeswax candles, actually, uh, which were traditionally dipped, they were dipped, which is taking wick, tying it onto a couple of... Um, onto a, uh, a, a small, um, uh, uh, either a, a, a piece of wood, a molded piece of wood, and you'd have two pieces of beeswax on either end with enough space between them. And you literally dip them, bring them up just so that there was enough wax that would cover each session. Let it dry, dip it again, let it dry, dip it again, let it dry, dip it again. A candle like that in the 12th century, one single candle was, was basically worth a day's wage for a worker. So you can imagine if, if if you go to work one you go to work during the day and at night the only thing you can afford to do if you wanted to have any light and you could actually read at night you could even read at all for that matter in those days uh, you'd use your whole day's wage just to buy one candle. Uh, thankfully, beeswax beeswax candles actually burn quite long. Um, I mean, I've tested some of my beeswax candles. So here's one for example. I mean, this little guy here. <clears throat> this thing will burn for about 10, 12 hours. So it gives you a really good, decent uh, length of time. It's quite a short one. We've got longer ones. We've got pillars. Now this one here, it's a phenomenal little candle. This one will build about, burn about 25 hours uh, just because it's got a bit more height on it. All right, it's a beautiful mold on that that we've got. And then we've got another one here that we use that's just decorative, but uh, not necessarily just decorative, but it's really pretty cool it's like lotus lotus flower petal mold on that one so we sell all of those at the shop but those are the candles that you could think of making if you had a mold and in the old days they used to use believe it or not they used to actually use wood wooden molds uh generally speaking but what ended up happening is that there was actually a german uh stranglehold basically once once beeswax candles became so popular only the churches could afford them and the wealthy could afford them at night so what ended up happening is a lot of butchers ended up started using tallow as a replacement so this is, this is a bit of a side quest here tallow is basically the fat of animals all animal processed fat in the old days and then they would use those for the common people to make those uh, make use that to make candles with um, obviously it was really smelly it had really bad smoke and uh, didn't burn for as long, but they were cheap. They weren't beeswax. And you could just get them from the local butcher anywhere in town. So uh, that's a bit of history in terms of how it came into being. And um, yeah, thanks, Barry. That's, that's pretty cool. We'll talk about a couple of, couple of documentaries a little bit later as well. But, uh, and welcome, guys, to everybody that came in a bit late. Um, Thanks for joining us. So yeah, as a candle maker, your the official name in the UK and or Europe, mostly Europe, is a chandler. 
and uh, they became so popular that they would actually be hired even to come and live you know in and at a church for example you'd become a chandler that would be your job uh you'd be a camel maker and that would be your thing that you could become a professional at um in the old days another thing that'd be interested that's interesting is that by 1830 uh so up until about 1830 1820, 1830, German scientists figured out that you could take petroleum and uh, with petroleum that you could make paraffin, extract paraffin wax out of it. And there, then they pretty much saw the decline of the beeswax candle um, and, and its use as, a, as for lighting uh, people's homes and room bedrooms and stuff like that at night, uh, where paraffin wax was much easier to, to um, or cheaper rather, to, to make and to use as a, as a light facility during night and uh but what's also cool is that ancient egyptians used to use it very much in medicine and as well as mummify mummification mummifying the pharaohs it's also been used uh in old scrolls across mediterranean and especially in egypt by the medicine by the by their doctors basically uh when when wounds were involved they would actually especially deep wounds they would actually stuff whole comb the whole honeycomb, so honey, honey with the beeswax, squish it like this and stuff it into the into the uh, into the wound. And when it, if there was a, a, a wound during battle, a wound that was just caused either um, during work or whatever the case is, any kind of wound like that would have been stuffed with beeswax and honey at the time, and then it would have been stitched up. And so with the so with the stitches being applied with honey and wax as well. Excellent use of um, a natural product. Even back then, they knew how to do this and, and the benefits of using both beeswax and honey together uh, when dealing with wounds. Um, another cool thing that 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 so historical use is also still used today. Anybody, I don't know anybody that does jewelry at home or mold making. Uh, a lot of the a lot of use, even even in um, sort of Stone Age time times. Uh, uh, right in the beginning, uh, when we discovered met metallurgy and all that sort of stuff, uh, wouldn't be in Stone Age, would have been the Iron Age, right? Yeah, of course, not Stone Age, would have been Iron Age. Um, they would basically use this thing called lost wax casting. So you create something uh, in, a, in a format, in a form of wood or a mold of some kind, and you put wax in there, and then you put your stuff in there, and they, then you take away the wax afterwards, and there you have your beautiful molded product. Uh, so lost wax casting was a big thing for centuries as well, in terms of historical uses. We also used to use it as wax tablets. So these are still actually available today, and there's a couple of examples in the Louvre, and there's a couple of examples in the UK and e Egyptian um, uh, museums as well. Basically, you could use it before printing presses were involved or, or created or designed and invented by also by the heart of, I think it was Gutenberg in, in Germany. You could actually, and you did take a wax tablet, uh, tablets, and uh, you'd, you'd write your messages on that and then you could stamp it with, a, with paper uh, or papyrus, uh, depending on what you use, rice paper, paper, whatever the case is. So that's, that was a phenomenal use of, of um, wax, beeswax in the old days. Uh, another one is that uh, it was used with bow making. So that's pretty cool. You could use it in bow making and you'd also use it in, in strengthening and waterproofing the, sin, the sinews of the actual bow string. So that, that's a pretty cool use. And believe it or not, it's a, a modern day use of beeswax is actually in bullets, making bullets. So. Anybody that makes their own bullets at the moment uh, it uses beeswax. It's not a hell of a lot of, uh, of beeswax in the process, but they do do they do use beeswax in making bullets. Um, something else that's quite interesting is that I've noticed in a lot of my research that uh, in the Olympics, in the old Olympics, the Greek Olympics, when we go back to the ancient Greeks, a lot of the prizes were awarded if you won races or fights and all that sort of stuff and chariot races and all that sort of thing back in ancient Greek Olympic days, guess what you'd be awarded as a prize? Jars of honey and blocks yeah. of bees and yeah, and blocks of beeswax, right? <laughs> so it's amazing to, to know the value of what beeswax used to have in, our, in, in history. And in fact, in Roman times, there were even uh, 
some nations that were under rule of 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 the Romans in in ancient times uh, used to actually pay taxes. Guess what? In beeswax, <laughs> because it would be used with in 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 the army in the Roman army for their beeswax, for their uh, bowstrings, for bow making, for waterproofing. Okay, because you'd waterproof your leather, you'd waterproof the tents that they would live in and all the materials that they would use, as well as being able to be used as rust proofing, okay, ingredient. And that obviously continues to today. It makes an excellent rust proof uh, material, okay. So anybody do uh, jewelry? I was asked a little bit earlier on, I didn't see any hands up, but uh, cool, if, if nobody's doing jewelry, then you're not going to use beeswax for that. But uh, yeah, so those are quite those are those are some quite cool uh, uses in terms of what you can do, what was being done with beeswax in the old days. Okay, um, anybody use it for any of those things now? Anybody making bows? Anybody doing candles like me? Historical uses. What about in in? Uh, I know we had a, we had the African uh, horse sickness talk last week. Anybody that have that has horses at the moment should be treating you should be treating your saddles and the stirrups and the reins and everything with beeswax okay. good idea yeah i see barry is using it to keep his tobacco pipes in mint condition um amali says she uses <laughs> it for her bows and on her awesome. attack yes there we go brilliant so it's perfect for that guys okay now, some other historical uses, just uh, before we move on from the historical uses, I want to just cover one or two more things, right? These are a couple of, a couple of the other things that we use for, obviously found in Egyptian mummies. It was used in shipbuilding to waterproof as well. Uh, we also used it in the Middle Ages. It was valuable enough to become a form of currency, as we, as we spoke about a little bit earlier on. Uh, didgeridoos, believe it or not, use beeswax, okay? It's a traditional use for the mouthpiece. So I've I've actually sold a lot of wax for that, <laughs> and lutes. Some lutes also use it, and some flutes as well. So if anybody's into didgeridoo, ing, I don't know if that's the if that's the word, making music with didgeridoos, uh, then you need beeswax for your mouthpiece. Okay, but uh, yeah, it was used for sculpting, dentistry, jewelry work, uh, any kind of casting metals in the old days. A lot of the uses in the ancient times, a lot of sealing wax as well. Um, so that's pretty amazing. And remember, as I said, bullets can use it in explosive bullets as well. It's pretty cool. Now, what is it actually made of and how does it work? How do bees get hold of these wax? Well, worker bees actually make them and the worker bees are females. In fact, um, they do all pretty much do all the work in the hive. I don't know, you know, I don't know how how they got that right, the, the drone bees. But uh, anyway, <laughs> they uh, all the worker bees build the hive and they build all the wax comb inside there. And the way that they do this, they actually have like little wax producing glands, okay, on the abdomen. Um, it's between the fourth and seventh segments on the abdomen as part of the ventral shield or plate. And uh, what they do, they get these mirror glands on the inner side of the sternites a bit more scientific stuff for anybody who likes scientific stuff. And then uh, size of the wax glands depends on the age of the worker. So basically what ends up happening while a bee is a nurse bee, and that's usually the first eight or so days of their, of their life. They don't normally leave the hive unless they go into the toilet. Okay, they're pretty hygienic. So they go out, they fly, they go on the, they go on the, they literally go do the, the, the mile high loo club <laughs> and they go, they leave the hive and off they go, they do their stuff, they do their business outside, and then they come back and they continue building. But they don't do anywhere near the amount of flying that a field hive would do, okay? A field hive bee, would, uh, bee worker would do. Uh, and so when they get to about the age of um, 10 or 12 days, the, the wax glands start closing, and eventually by the, day they get, by the time they're fully fledged worker bee foragers, about day 18, 16, day 18, uh, uh, it almost gets atrophy, uh, so it almost stops working. Um, so it's vital that you continuously, as a beekeeper, you need to continuously need, and so does the colony, obviously, continuously need new bees, uh, new baby bees that are being born and reproduced. And this is why there's the cycle of life, so to speak. And over that period of those first two weeks, um, 
a worker bee is responsible for creating wax. Okay. Um, what they do, uh, and then how does it work from there? So when it comes out, it's basically white or almost clear, translucent-ish. Uh, it's colorless, and over time it becomes opaque. And then what you end up seeing is that what ends up, it becomes what we normally know as beeswax. Uh, and it's very soft and malleable at that point as well. You've got to be so careful when, you, when you're a beekeeper working with new, brand new wax that's white because you literally could almost look at it and it'll, it, it can break. <laughs> okay, it's very fragile. But over time, what ends up happening to start turning yellow. And a lot of that's down to the just being used. You know, bees are working or walking all over it, walking on it. It, it order also hardens over time. So it almost like pure, uh, cures over time. But it also gets laced with propolis. So on a daily basis, the, the comb in the hive will get laced with a microscopic amount of propolis as and when bees are moving around, doing their thing. And especially when a new egg uh, comes out of the hive, that entire cell then also by nurse bees is cleaned and resurfaced and, and relined with a, uh, with, a, with a bit of propolis in there to, to make it hygienic and ready for the next egg to be laid inside. So that's how um, beeswax is created. And uh, it's interesting that essentially bees need around, it's a 10 to one ratio, give or take, eight to 10 times amount of honey needs to be consumed in order to make beeswax, all right? So it's, it's quite an exceptional um, demanding ingredient uh, in, in itself being needing to be made. And uh, uh, that's why it's, it, it always amazes me when people say, you know, when they say, I, I ask them like, well, what do you do with your peas back? Oh no, we just toss it, we just leave it at the hive, we throw it away. And I'm like, whoa, that's crazy. Okay. That blows my mind, hey? What's that? Okay. Can I show you how to give Misty her medicine? I don't know. Who's that? <laughs> um, anyway, getting on with the with the beeswax. Um, yeah, if we talk about temperature-wise, ambient temperature in the hive is about 33 to 36 degrees. Uh, the melting point is about 63, 65 degrees, give or take, depending on where you are. And... Um, it's estimated that bees fly about 150,000 miles, roughly six times around the earth to yield one pound of beeswax, okay? Sure. One pound of beeswax is about, what, 450 grams, 454 grams or so, give, give or take a gram. And um, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. So that's a little bit of the, the background about how much it takes to make the beeswax, why it was so, why it's basically even today, it's actually relative, it doesn't fetch prices uh, as much of a, as a daily wage, workers' wage, but uh, it's certainly, um, I suppose it depends where you are actually in the world. You know, it, it could actually still do that. Uh, I mean, we, you know, we, 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 for the price that we sell a kilogram of beeswax, actually probably in some countries it does fetch per kilogram anyway. It, it will still fetch the price of a daily wage somewhere, somewhere in the world, absolutely. Um, there's a lot of different ways of being able to uh, filter the beeswax and uh, get out all the impurities as well as some of the propolis that, that doesn't necessarily want to, you don't want to have that necessarily if you're producing cosmetic goods and or any food safe goods uh, would be edible. It's fine. We can eat it, but we don't absorb beeswax as humans. <clears throat> Literally what would happen is it actually just passes straight through your system. So it could actually be used potentially, and I'm not a doctor, so don't take my, you know, uh, don't use this as, as, as advice, but it could potentially be used as a cleanser for your, uh, for your gut, you know, for your intestines and stuff like that. So you could actually swallow it, you could chew it, you could swallow it. It was also used, by the way, in the old days um, for toothache and for fillings. Um, it was used as a filling, uh, a filler in, in broken teeth or in teeth that have holes and so on and so forth, as well as in surgeries. But you can swallow it and uh, it won't be absorbed into the system, but it does just pass through. It's pretty cool. What does Amali say? Um, yeah, when we spin honey, we do act, we, we do carefully try to keep it as much as the comb as we can and place it back in the hive. Yeah, exactly. That, that's exactly what an extractor or centrifuge, uh, centrifugal force extractor should be used for uh, is because you can get twice as much honey um, in the same 
in the same period of time that you are that the, that something's flowering. So in a three week period, you if you're using an extractor to extract your honey and you don't break the comb or crush the comb, the bees just have to refill that comb, that honeycomb. Okay, uh, instead of having to rebuild it, which can take them another ten days to do. By the time that that three week flowering period is over, you might have taken one one harvest of honey. And if you use all the if you use all the comb, if you take the comb and crush that, it takes them the rest of the time that that uh, crop is flowering in order to re rebuild the actual comb. So rather use an extractor. It's a much better model in in term, terms of your economics. So yeah, thanks for that, Amali. Um, all right. So that's a couple of things around the anatomy and the production, the physical characteristics. It's tough. It, beeswax. It's a tough wax. It's formed from a mixture of several compounds. Chemical formula for beeswax, geez, this is long. It's C15, H31, COO, C30, H61. Anybody scientist on here or lab technician, you might know what any of that means. <laughs> uh, I have an idea of what it means, but you you, you, you can thrive on the idea of having uh, having the, the, the chemical formula on that. But essentially, it's made of oleate esters, long chain allopathic alcohols as ratio, of lots of complicated things, triocontinol palmitate uh, acid and two principal components being six to one beeswax can be clarified generally into European and Oriental types. Okay. And uh, yeah, so you can tell the origin actually of beeswax by having it tested because um, it does vary from location to location and region to, to region, but uh, I don't think there's too many too many companies that will actually do that, but um, especially not in South Africa. But you can have it tested and checked for, you know, country of origin, et cetera, et cetera. And they do vary slightly in their, in their makeups in terms of um, saponification. But uh, other than that, uh, yeah, just be careful when working with beeswax. It does have a flash point of 204 degrees. So that's Celsius, okay, 399 Fahrenheit. So it can catch a light. Uh, and actually burst into flame, not just if you're using it as in the candle format, okay? Uh, so do be careful if you are using with beeswax, it can literally have, a, it has an, a flash point, hence why it was used in explosives as well in the old days. Um, also, what is Emily saying? Beeswax on wound also keeps, keeps flies away, yep. And uh, so that's pretty cool. And it also creates a seal, artificial seal on the wound. Um, so not just keeps flies away, but it also creates a base cover for that wound as well. And what's beautiful, what's quite cool about it is that the, the skin can still breathe uh, after the fact, which is pretty awesome. So um, in, terms of, in terms of how all of that works with physical characteristics, that's pretty much covering it in terms of beeswax. Uh, what do we use it for and what are the benefits that you guys can use it for? So here's a couple of things. Beeswax wraps have become a thing. Okay, lots of people moving away from plastic, and uh, interestingly enough, beeswax was deemed the first kind of plastic actually known to man uh, before before petroleum plastic came in came into being. So uh, it's coming back into favor right now because it's such a natural product because it's completely natural, 100% natural. Um, you can make beeswax wraps, which are basically preservative type of wraps using cotton. Uh, cotton materials and dipping it into beeswax with a little bit of oil and you get what's what's really cool full food safe preserving um, uh, wrap or kind of like cling cling film it's kind of like a beef bee film bees wrap film and uh, yeah it preserves food really well and you can reuse it all the time so that's become quite popular in the green in the green industry type of uh, and, and vegan vegetarian type of areas even though typically it might not actually be as they define it, vegan friendly because you're using products from a bee. Uh, but that's what it can be used for. Uh, a lot of a lot of people are now making these and, and selling them uh, or making them just for themselves to use at home rather than using so much plastic stuff. Especially if you've seen like uh, uh, documentaries like Sea Spiracy now and all of the talk about how bad the plastic use is on the planet. It's ridiculous. Um, but anyway, you know that we can use it for candles, right? So I've shown you all the candles that we've made. We make, we've got about 20 different molds that we make candles from. Obviously, you can do dip candles, which is pretty awesome. But we've also got a couple of other exciting stuff that we make with beeswax, and all natural products. So one of them is this, is this, is this joyful thing over here. 
this is our, let me actually open that. You can see this is our uh, baby nappy rash cream. So all natural products and uh, phenomenal baby, baby rash cream. I also do a wood preserver cream, cutting board wax. That's a wood wax preserver. It's all for your butcher's blocks, chopping blocks, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, anything that you want to use it on. Antique furniture is pretty cool. You can make a polish out of it or a furniture uh, waterproofing uh, wood wax type of product. Uh, it's also used in balms, lip balms, that kind of stuff. So I've got a, I've got a, a hair balm. I've got a lip balm. I've got a beard balm. You know, any one of those you can use. Uh, and we also make facial creams as well out of it. So it's really cool in cosmetics. Why? So because it's an emulsifier. Okay. So obviously, aside from having some, some, other, some of the benefits we've already discussed, it also is an awesome emulsifier. And by that, it means it binds other products. So you put oil into it, it binds the oil into the beeswax. And therefore, you can actually create a a bunch of different things other than trying to use water because water and oil as we know doesn't don't don't mix too well they're not best of friends they're kind of frenemies however if you mix it with beeswax any any kind of oily based type of stuff binds to the beeswax and so so can water as well in, in a lot of ways so you can make hair products you can make soaps you can make candles you can make balms lip balms hair balm all that kind of stuff it's really useful for dreadlocks if anybody's uh, wearing dreadlocks it's phenomenal works exceptionally well for gardener's hands especially when you got cracks and if you are a mechanic uh phenomenal for cracked hands and and even for also for cracked feet if anybody's got cracked feet or uh, dry feet in the winter especially coming up now you want to use beeswax a beeswax balm for that and uh, it seals and helps coat and moisturize the skin a little bit as well um so for those particular uses, awesome. We mentioned rust right in the beginning, a rust proofing uh, ability of beeswax, which is pretty cool. You've got to do multiple uses, obviously, of course. And, and in hot climate, climate countries, it, you know, it can tend to um, melt if it gets above 36, uh, 36 degrees. It does start getting um, uh, a little bit um, toward, go, go moving towards melting uh, but it doesn't, it needs to actually get above about 63, 64 degrees direct heat. So it can withstand quite a lot of heat uh, when being used for rust. The other thing that it's really used for is uh, we talked about bow, bow string use early on and bow making. But if anybody does any, any threading, any kind of thread work, especially around leather work, saddlery, saddlery work, uh, clothing, that kind of stuff, it's, it's exceptionally good for uh, treating the thread and for sealing the thread, which makes the thread last a lot longer than it would normally otherwise. And obviously, as we've mentioned before, really a good waterproof. But now we're not just talking about the thread being waterproof or leatherproof, leather, leather, waterproofing leather either. You can actually leatherproof tents and, and any other kind of canvas with beeswax. So it's pretty awesome from, a, from any, anything that you're wanting to waterproof, you can use beeswax as a natural product. Shoes, is, shoes are included, okay? Um, another one is using the wax print press we talked about, digeroos was another one, bullets, hair products. Hair removal is, is something else that beeswax is, is not, not as used as often anymore because it is quite expensive, but it used to be used as, as a, as a um, a hair removal product in the old days. Uh, so that's that's another useful product or useful for beeswax these days. But you'd be, be surprised to know that um, it's used in, in a lot of food. Beeswax is used as a coating of cheese, protects us as it gets older. It's used as an additive. It's also known as an E901 uh element in any food so next time you guys look at your food products uh, the ingredients on the back and it lists e901 you know you now know that that's beeswax being used in that product usually either to coat it or to keep it from uh to preserve it uh for longer shelf lives okay and interestingly a skincare product uh, as skincare products a german study found beeswax to, to, to be superior to similar barrier creams uh, usually mineral oil-based creams such as petroleum jelly. 
when used according to its protocol. So it's also been used as moustache wax, okay, and hair pomenades, and also as an ingredient in surgical bone wax. So that's, that's another awesome use for it. Um, so guys, in terms of using beeswax, I don't know if any of you guys are using it. We've had a, some examples from Amali at the moment, which is pretty awesome, but uh, that's, that's more or less the, the, uh, the gist of what I'm, I'm using beeswax for at the moment. It also gets used for, uh, outside of that, for industrial use. You can actually use it to coat the inside of an engine, um, which is pretty interesting. If you're doing a re, uh, what do you call it? A re reworking an engine. Um, um, this is motor engine, a vehicle engine now, car engines and truck engines. It's also been used in the pistons, for pistons as well, for recoating of that. I've even had, and this is a this is a true story. I had one of Johannesburg's most famous uh, morticians come and visit me. Now this is a good 10, 11 years ago, and um, this this blew my mind. But it, it must be one of the most bizarre reasons I've ever heard of beeswax being used. But here we go. I'm gonna tell you. He came and saw me. He was like, what color beeswax do you have? You know, does it come in different colors? And I'm like, yeah, sure it does. You know, and the color doesn't take away from the quality, by the way. It just de depends how much propolis is actually in it and how old the beeswax is. Uh, just it doesn't take anything away from the quality. It might be perceived that way, but that's not the case. Anyway, this guy chap, this this chap came and he came through and he was like, uh, how, you know, how do you, what determines the difference in the color? Do you guys put food color into it or what? I'm like, no, 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 no just based on its natural age and or amount of propolis. And he said to me, okay, well, I'm looking for a specific kind. I said, well, that's, that's okay. I'll show you what I've got. And I said to him, what are you going to actually use this for? I didn't know at the time that he was a mortician, but he turned around and said to me, listen, you know, it's not something, not something I've done very often. In fact, it's hardly, hardly, hardly done at all, but there was a particular family that ended up with a, uh, member that was that had passed away that had an accident that had a motorbike accident and damaged a large portion of their face and their head and um they wanted to still have an open cask uh funeral for this family member and he said he had done some work before you know in being able to do this for a for 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 uh for a burial, but uh, or for, for funeral, but he said this was an extreme case. He had to actually rebuild the majority of the guys, the person's face and head, and then obviously do all the makeup and everything at the same time as well. And he said one of the reasons why he's coming to see me is because he wants beeswax in order to be able to reconstruct this person's face and and skull, essentially to make them be able to have an open cask uh, funeral for their family. And that just blew my mind. That's when I started like really asking, like figuring out what was going on with beeswax, how, what else can it be used for? And uh, how is it that we can stop making products out of it? And so ever since then, we've been, you know, we, we do a lot of work in beeswax and uh, we also do, we also, we also buy a lot of beeswax because we just can't, you know, we seem to uh, make, we make beeswax, but as you know, you can tell it takes 10 times, almost, almost 10 times the amount of honey to produce, you know, one pound of, of beeswax, uh, which is pretty, pretty amazing in terms of the ratios there. And while the demand, I think is just increasing all the time. Um, you beeswax also be also used to be used in uh, helping to cork helping to cork a wine and olive bottles, olive oil bottles. Um, it also used to be used to seal those. It used to be used to seal letters. So you also used to have the old seal, uh, the royal seals and all just uh, formal seals when writing letters to people and scrolls. Uh, so they all used to have these amazing scrolls. Now I've got, I've actually had a, I've had a beeswax uh, stamp created uh, over the last three weeks. And uh, it's phenomenal to try and use that uh, in, in writing letters to people uh, and uh, to create cool invitations, a cool, a cool experience around beeswax and just being able to seal it. It's, it feels pretty awesome. Yeah, um, Adele's confirming the seal one, sealing of the one corks thing. Yeah, exactly. And obviously it also used to be used in, I think we mentioned in Egypt, 
with uh, some of the shipbuilding, but later on, uh, when ship, shipbuilding became a lot more um, more industrialized, it was used to waterproof a lot of the, the beams and also between the boards as well uh, in the made in the big shipbuilding. You know, in the, uh, when it became like a, a massive um, industrial exercise. So yeah, it's pretty awesome in terms of what you can do with beeswax. From emulsifying perspective, it it uh, it can be used recipe wise. Um, I think we can. Uh, who's got questions? Let's move into a Q and A uh, session at this point. I think um, I've covered as much as I can think of, except for if you, anybody eats jelly beans, you know they get coated in a bit of beeswax. I don't know if you guys knew that. Okay, uh, just because it keeps them uh, preserved for longer, right? So interestingly enough, there's the, so the amount of uses in beeswax um, is just, it blew my mind when I first got into it. It's, 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 pretty, it's pretty amazing. Um, you, can, you, can, you can have an edible coating made up of beeswax, coconut oil, and sunflower oil on strawberries and apricot fruits. It prolongs their life. It has a positive effect on the moisture loss, the appearance, the texture, and the firmness of those fruits alone. Um, and it also has an antifungal effect on the coated fruits when including coconut oil, which also has vitamin E in it, natural vitamin E in it too, which is probably why it actually has, because uh, it's got mono, monolauric acid uh, in there. Um, so it's, yeah, it's used in, used in all sorts of food coating processes and the creation of food, which is pretty awesome. Um, but yeah, a lot of people, unfortunately, because beeswax is, is more, much more expensive than paraffin wax, petroleum-based wax, they've moved over to that. And one of the problems with petroleum or paraffin-based product is that it creates a barrier. It doesn't actually, it, people think that you can moisturize, just moist, if you're using those kind of products, you, you, you're able, it helps in the moisturization of your skin. But, the, but actually, that's a, mis, that's a misnomer. All it does is it creates a barrier between the external part of the skin and the, the internal side of the skin. Therefore, it keeps moisture, whatever moisture there was, it keeps in the skin, but it doesn't allow any extra or additional moisture, moisturizing of the skin when using paraffin-based, uh, petroleum-based, like, like um, what you call it, um, Vaseline is a perfect example. Everybody thinks Vaseline is the bee's knees, so to speak, but it actually ain't. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's not a great product. A, you're using petroleum on your skin and B, which is petrol effectively, B, it's, it's, not, it's not allowing any moisture. Uh, it's not adding any moisture into the skin. In fact, it actually can cause uh, more moisture loss over time uh, simply because it doesn't allow any, any, any of the skin to be able to absorb any local moisture into the skin itself. It creates a barrier between that and the skin. So, um, yeah, in terms of uh, in terms of being able to use product-based stuff, just um, just be grades. Oh, that's another thing I think we it's worthwhile discussing is the tops, the grades of beeswax. So you get cosmetic-grade beeswax, you get food-grade beeswax or food-safe beeswax, and then you just get what's called uh, it's kind of like scum. Um, and the use for beeswax for the scum of the beeswax or the not not really food-based or uh, cosmetic use is essentially stuff that can be used again by the beekeeper. A lot of beeswax actually gets recycled into the beekeeping industry because we use it to make beeswax sheets. So we make beeswax sheets ourselves at Beware. We sell those, we put them in our beehives. It creates a foundation for the bees to start off with as a starter strip to build. They know how to do all the building, but what we do is we just give them a direction so that, so that they don't cross build inside the hive. If you don't give them any foundation or any, any starter strip, then they build, they build skew inside the hive and frame and then it becomes uh, um, unmanageable um, so we recycle a lot of the beeswax through into beeswax foundation sheets and that's one of the reasons why you can also take the foundation sheets and actually do roll candles uh, so that's another way of making candles which is pretty cool um, it was used in Egypt for bombing yes uh, as well so that's pretty cool um, so for embalming it was used for mummification used as corks it's used as waterproofing, all kinds of all kinds of uh, materials and leather, especially, and also for rust proofing. So just to repeat for a couple of people, I think it might have been a bit late that didn't hear that part. Um, 
Oh, Barry says they also found it on some historical documents helping to preserve it uh, being destroyed or eaten by bugs, which is pretty cool. Yeah, didn't know about that one, but as I say, it also was used seriously to, to waterproof hey, wood, uh, leather, um, and probably the seals, and, and even what where, where uh, paper and documents, papyrus documents were even stored. It's probably used, uh, they used a lot of beeswax for that too. So yeah, let's open up to Q&A, guys. Anybody got questions? Who's got questions? Put your hand up and go for it. Warwick, do you have any recipes that you can share with us for maybe one balm? Okay, so really, really basic one. Um, and it, it really depends on how on how fluid you want your balm to be. But the, obviously, the, the less fluid you want it to be, so wood wax would probably be fairly hard still uh, in, in use. That means you need to put more beeswax uh, in ratio to oil. Uh, or carrier oil that you're going to be using okay and if you want it to be softer you're going to use less beeswax so it's more or less um i would take you could take any anything uh, i would prefer i prefer coconut oil over olive oil simply because coconut oil allows more breathing to take place and it's probably a little bit easier on the skin although olive oil has also been you know shown to be pretty pretty good for the skin um, but it does depend on your skin type so depending on what your skin type is you might want to avoid these products altogether, mixing oils, oil-based carriers with beeswax uh, versus versus thinking that they're going to be good for your skin and then going ahead and using it. So use your discretion on this. But essentially, if you want to make a, um, uh, let's say, a, a, a hair balm. So if you want to use a hair balm, you want jojoba, jojoba oil or yojoba. And uh, you could use an essential oil or the actual natural thing. I prefer to use the natural oil, not the essential oil of yoga. And you'd probably use there a ratio of about, uh, because it's going to go in the hair, you, you want it to be fairly, you know, not sort of runny. Know, but you you're... could make it runny if you wanted to, but you wanted to have a bit of a soft yeah, touch. Being... Okay. So in that case, you're only going to use a about... conference on beekeeping, beekeeping. Yeah. But just, you're just gonna... finish now. You're going to use uh, about 10%. You're going to use about 10% beeswax and about 90% uh, yojoba oil in that case. So that that's one example. You could add a couple of maybe maybe one or two nice smelly smelly type of stuff. Maybe two or three drops of um, uh, lavender essential oil potentially in that. Um, another one could be um, Ylang -ylang. Uh, any one of those would be quite nice, but don't don't put more than two or three drops in at any given time. Okay. Uh, oh, another thing we didn't discuss, I think, was soaps. So another one that's really was really popular that you can make and still make uh, uh, with beeswax is soaps, homemade soaps, which is pretty awesome. Soap bars, bars of soap, etc. It does take a while for them to cure. You can it can take up to a minimum of three weeks. Uh, sometimes even up to 10 weeks for, for specific kinds of um, soap uh, recipes to, to cure or to harden and be ready for use. Um, uh, Amali's got a recipe, she says a hard body bar, the one part coconut oil, shea butter or, or cocoa butter and, a, and beeswax, add a few drops of your favorite essential oil. Yeah, it's cool. Oh, actually, there's a there is a cray, there, there's a there's an up, up and coming trend. So we talked about beeswax wraps, which is not really body use. It's more of a food use based, but uh, something that's really cool that's coming up now, um, I mean, is uh, something called, um, uh, it's kind of body perfume or body perfume. I think it's called body body perfume. So I think it's similar to what you're talking about, Amali, a hard body bar. But uh, basically what it is, is that instead of actually using a spray based perfume, you could actually use, you can create a bar which needs to be fairly, the, 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 the amount of beeswax there probably needs to be about 25% to, to the ratio of oil that you're going to use, uh, maybe even up to 30%. And essentially, you could carry this as a bar around with you. It's a perf perfume bar or body bar. And uh, if you're using coconut with that, it'd be pretty cool. But you also want to use your essential oils that would, 
would smell great. So Lang Lang's pretty good. Um, uh, lavender could be quite good. Uh, what's the other one? Um, I've got my rather buy. I've got my uh, <laughs> got my stack of essential oils here. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see those, but yeah, that's them there. <laughs> Can't really clearly see them, but um, patchouli is another one. And um, so you could use things like, uh, and these. The problem is that these these do get quite expensive. Okay, so that's patchouli. Smells delicious, and it's really good for antidepressants. It's good for just uplifting your mood and stuff like that. It's also quite good for regeneration of the skin. Um, and then you can do things. I would also include something like vitamin E oil. Always include something like vitamin E. And the reason being is that vitamin E helps preserve the, the, the overall product and the finish of the product when, in, when used for skin. Okay. And um, it, it'll help keep it for longer in uh, our shelf life. Okay. Uh, what else are we, if you, if you guys are looking at making something for, because uh, majority of cosmetic products are made for, for women, for females, then you'd want to use something that smells, you know, cool, like flowers or other nice smelling stuff. If you, however, are wanting to make something for your guy in your life, then you'd want to be using something like um, cedar. Uh, what's the other one that I use? Um, myrrh. Myrrh is a pretty cool one. Um, you would not want to be using things like ylang ylang or patchouli uh, or even lavender. You can also make something. I've got citronella here. So you can, what's pretty cool is you can make, you can take a beeswax candle and add citronella oil at the time that you're mixing it up. When this is melted, you put in some citronella oil. You do the same with some, some lotions and you can create your own and that'll be, what does this do? Well, citronella is an insect repellent, uh, especially used around mozzies, mosquitoes, that kind of thing. Um, but also kind of try and use things like uh, marula oil. I've also got a kai, a kai, a kai berry or kai berry uh, oil here. Quite expensive, but really, um, really, really beneficial for the skin. Okay. Um, yeah, pretty much uh, you can, you can, depending on guys, something else that's also important while we're on this note, okay, is um, you can use one of my things, one of my oil, one of my things, the cap must be, must have been used, it's spilled a bit. Anyway, um, what you can use is uh, what you do use. So like, let's say lavender, it's not just about the smell, okay? Remember that lavender is also exceptionally good for use with, with the skin, for example. It's also a mild sedative, it's antiseptic, it's antimicrobial, um, and it also helps with skin generation and repair of uh, wounds, okay, and scars. So when you use something like lavender or any of the other essential oils, it's not just gonna be about the smell, okay? Just always bear that in mind. There's always, the smell is a byproduct. It's not, it's not the main event. All of these essential oils will have actual medicinal properties and benefits. So check on those as well uh, before you start making any products that you're going to be using for your skin or your hair, uh, because they could have uh, sedentary effects. You know, they could be sedative, uh, or they might be making you. They might even make you drowsy. You know, stuff like that. So um, they could also keep you awake, uh, depending on what you're going to end up using. Uh, peppermint is really lively. It could be quite good as a <clears throat> as a um, something to use on the feet or the hands, especially if they cracked peppermint. But when it gets into the bloodstream, it's got a mood. It's mood. It's kind of like mood altering. Okay, mood enhancing, because it's going to give you a spike in your energy levels. Okay, because it's a stimulant. So just bear that in mind when you are using any of these kind of essential oils. I know this isn't a talk about essential oils, but beeswax is going to have to be accompanied with other items and other ingredients when you're using it for the skin. So I think it's worthwhile to, to mention this while we're on that subject. Um, after hand surgery, uh, Adele says, oh, they, hand, they use it on her hand for hand therapy. Beeswax to coat the hand. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, so it's, it's a phenomenal ingredient, guys. Please don't throw it away if you are keeping bees. 
um, and harvested harvested it you know harvest it wisely. And uh, if you have excess beeswax, let me know. Give me a shout. Contact me at Beware, and we will arrange to take it off your hands and make something with it as well. So Warwick. Yeah. Faye, ask if you have a recipe book that you are selling for be be uh, beeswax products. <laughs> We've got a couple that we we got a couple of recipes that we use, but we've 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 never we've not put them into the book yet. But I think that's a cool idea. Um, I think I can make that I can make something like that up over the next uh, maybe the next three four weeks. And uh, that was Faye Davis, hey, eh? awesome. Yeah, so I can put something like that together in the next few weeks, and then I can make it available to you guys to the to the groups to the Beware group to the self. Self-sufficient, <laughs> yeah. Homesteading uh, and, homesteading. and gardening. And gardening group. <laughs> yep. Right, um, and then guys, um, I just oh, somebody said yeah. When you do a book one day, I'll illustrate it. Wow, Barry. Awesome, Barry. That's cool. Did you get? I hope you got your honey and your and and yeah and your goodies. <laughs> yeah, the seeds were sent off in the week, so the he coming. should have it the soon. Coming. Yeah. Listen, I just want to remind everybody, the ones that was on the talk last week and this week as well, if you're still on the talk, not still, if you're in the talk again next week, you are in line for the draw for the beehive. So um, don't miss next week either. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, man. I we think want to give somebody be, that beehive. We do, man. We do. And I, so I can get some wax from them, you know, <laughs> well, they can get their own wax, it can be cool, and they can make honey. But yeah, yes, yes, one of the other products that, you know, um, we use a lot for, for selling our beeswax. So this is one that we, a little 60 gram little bar, jar, uh, bar that we make, we call this an ingot. And this is ideal for taking your wax, uh, not your wax, your threads, and you'd pull it up and down and, and pull it through, the, through this wax, through this block. And uh, as you do that, you you seal the thread itself. And uh, so lots of people that are doing any leather work or um, need to waterproof or even, as I say, protect their, seal their thread in any thread work that they're doing for sewing and stuff like that. They use that little block. That's become quite popular as well. So yeah, awesome guys. Anybody got any other questions? Um, if you want, as I say, with the recipe, it's difficult to say because I think I've given you guys enough of an idea you know, the harder you want the product, uh, the more beeswax to to oil uh, that you wanted that you want to use. Um, the softer you want the product, the other, the other way, yeah, you know, it goes the other way. So I wouldn't go, you know, I wouldn't really. If you want to, you know, to get it like a really really soft product, you need to be. Um, you don't want to go less than five five percent beeswax, in my opinion. I think you're going to get really too. It'll still be runny at that point, actually. Um, so our wood oil, we've got a wood oil, and that 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 recipe is um, a very you know it's got a very small amount of beeswax in there. But um, yeah, what we can do is I'll I'll set something up in terms of a couple of recipes, um, and uh, and then we can make that available to you guys maybe by the end of the month. So that'll be cool. We'll uh, let you guys know what that uh, what that'll come you know what, what where to get it and how to get it and so on and so forth. But if you guys want to let us know, then, you know, in particular, what kind of products you want to make, um, then we can focus on those. I mean, traditionally, it's hand, feet, hair, face. So those are usually the ones that, are, you know, that people ask for uh, or that they want. Um, lip balm is a little bit, little bit tricky because you need, you know, you need to get the stuff into the actual lip, lip uh, container. Um, but other than that, using glass, I prefer using glass and or um, aluminium tins because they're recyclable. Um, but I have seen some people using even wooden wooden containers. That could be quite cool too. Uh, or bamboo even is, is even probably better. But uh, yeah, any, any other questions, guys, let us know. Otherwise, uh, if you're interested in getting hold of beeswax, if you don't have it, there's a website there that you can go to. That's that's my website that you can order online. We'll ship it to you. We do pellets, we do, do little beads. It's much easier to weigh the stuff and or um, use 
use it in increments if you like, or we do big blocks. We do blocks like this one, or and then we do bulk as well. So anybody looking for beeswax, you can give us a shout there at that website. Uh, it's the same. We operate from the same store in Centurion, and we'll ship anywhere in the country. So yeah. Otherwise, any other questions, guys? Uh, I think it's done. I think we're done. So typical, one more recipe maybe. We talked about a, so, because it's coming up to winter, right? You're going to get chill blends. Who gets chill blends? They're like sores on your, sores on the lips, around the mouth and or on the feet, and even on the hands, you know, with cracked hands. So a really good one for that would be about, um, I'd say about 20, yeah, about 25% wax. And then you'd want a coconut oil, two or three drops of vitamin oil. And then you'd want a lavender, two or three drops of essential oil of that. Okay. Um, and then you could, if you've got it, it, might be a little bit difficult to get, you know, and it's probably, and it's, I know it's, I know it's quite expensive, but if you can get hold of, um, real oil uh, and put in according to your carrier oil uh, you'd want the majority of the carrier oil to be uh, coconut ideally um, and then but drop if you're going to include something like marilla drop the coconut oil by about 15 percent and put in marilla oil uh, so if we're working out in grams or milliliters probably grams would be better so you're talking about 25 grams in a hundred hundred grams or hundred moles in product. Okay, so you talk about 25 grams of, of wax and then about a hundred grams, uh, yeah, hundred grams or hundred moles, big grams there, hundred grams of um, coconut oil uh, and then about five grams of, five to 10 grams of um, what's it called, rule oil. And then your uh, essential oil drops, as I say, vitamin E, you need about four or five drops of that. And then go with a lavender oil after that. Uh, and, and probably two or three drops of patchouli as well in there. Because the patchouli will help, help the skin regenerate. Yes. Warwick, Melandri's got a question there for you. Okay. Uh, Melandri, one of my friends once made a healing balm with honey. Yes, awesome. Citronella and other things that it worked wonders for the horses. Do you perhaps know what we put in it? Um, any of the products that I, this, this recipe I've just mentioned now can be used on horses too. Um, okay. Melandri, are you trying to make something to keep flies away or are you trying to make a healing balm for horses? I think it's, she says healing balm there. So that's oh, what I should one, read. Sorry. No, no, no. It's cool. Uh, the, but but this one is not mentioning beeswax. I imagine that's not beeswax. But honey, honey on its own, uh, Malanji. We, I think we mentioned this on on the previous talk a little bit as well um, about African horse horse sickness with with Tanya and Sai uh, last week. We mentioned I mentioned there that uh, treating any wounds for horses, especially any livestock actually that you can get access to the skin. So cows, goats, um, horses, uh, any, any particular open wound, especially an open wound, cover it with, cover it with honey because it creates, it's a, it's, we haven't done a honey episode either, actually. Well, maybe we did some, some, in I think our home, home remedies last year, Tanya, we probably talked about honey. Eh? Yeah, yeah, we, we did. did. We, we did, did talk about honey. Anyway, so long story short, Melandri, yes, you can cover open wounds with honey. Um, citronella would keep the flies away, so that's cool. And then you could, again, vitamin E. And um, um, I'd use probably lavender in there as well. The, the, the nice, oh, and another thing that I would use is whole clove oil. Um, whole clove oil uh, or, or clove bud oil. But that you use a very small amount because you don't necessarily want that to be in the, you know, you don't want too much of that to be in the bloodstream. Okay. And it's a hot oil. Yeah. 
Okay. So, but but it but but whole, whole clove oil will will also uh, create its um, what we call it. Uh, it's a sedative, but it's also a um, anesthetic, natural anesthetic. So it'll take away a bit of the pain as well as lavender. Lavender does it, but in a in a, in only about ten percent of the effectiveness of whole clove oil or clove butter oil. So uh, and then I would use the patchouli in there as well. And then obviously your vitamin E just to vitamin E is just good for the skin anyway. It doesn't have to be used on wounds, but it'll help. And it also helps preserve the entire concoction, if that makes sense. Um, so always try and use vitamin E if you can. And where do you get these, where do you get these things? Shea butter is a good one as well. Actually, I think uh, Amali was talking about shea butter earlier on. So I also I use shea butter too. Cacao butter is quite nice, but again, I use those in moderation and in small amounts because they're quite A, they're quite expensive. And B, they also, they mix. Uh, now you're talking about changing the components of how much beeswax you can put in because shea butter is, so all of the recipes are given up until now, the, 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 what do you call it? The percentages are given up until now will change. If you're gonna change, if you, if you change uh, or add shea butter or cacao butter to any of those um, percentage proportions, then you would need to downscale the amount of beeswax by half. Is the, um, the what's the name of it? The shea butter and the cacao butter are at room temperature, are kind of semi-solid anyway. So uh, when combined with the beeswax, the beeswax is completely solid. Okay. So and it emulsifies everything nicely together, but you need to drop the amount of beeswax in there. All right. There uh, was one more question. Is the cappings? There's a, there's a question from somebody, is the cappings that you remove uh, when you take out the honey, is that wax cappings the same as the uh, honey storage wax? Okay, good, great question. Now the cappings come on last. So remember in the beginning of the, of the session of the, of, the, of, of, the, of the live tonight, we talked about how the bees build the, the wax, right? So when it comes out, it's basically um, transparent. It's like opaque and it's brand new wax. So and it's white, it's largely white. So it changes over age. So what happens is, is as the cell's being built, obviously the wax, that cell itself is quite old by the time uh, it's gonna be at least about two weeks old by the time it starts getting filled with, with, uh, with beeswax, uh, with honey rather. Um, and then what happens is when it's ripe, when honey's moist, when, when the moisture content of honey is between 16 and 22 degrees, uh, percent rather, um, it's ripe. So honey, isn't always ripe, it isn't always honey either. Um, it's nectar first and then it gets moisture contents anywhere up to 60%, if not higher than that. And then what ends up happening is that the bees fan it and the moisture content drops all the way down to between 16 and 22%. And uh, when that happens, it's now become ripe, okay? Then it's not gonna ferment and all that sort of stuff. And in that final stage, they cap it to store it. And that the only reason why the honey cappings are, are spoken about in, in a difference to any other, in, any, any other part of the wax, beeswax in, in the comb, is that it's the last thing that's put on. So generally speaking, when that's taken off, it is really, it's spoken or, or deemed as top quality or best quality, but actually it's just because it's, 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 it's younger, so it's gonna be more opaque and it's gonna be less brown, okay? Less brown in color, less discolored, let's put it that way. So a lot of people talk about cosmetic beeswax as being the cappings, because it is a lot lighter, it's a lot less brown, it's probably gonna have less impurities in it because it's, it's only been around for a very short period of time in comparison to the rest of the comb. But it's still beeswax. Okay, so hopefully that's covered your question. Uh, if you can, I would keep the two separate. If you are uncapping and you are also using the comb to, to make product with or harvesting the comb as well as the uncapping, uncapping uh, um, parts of the, the, the wax and cappings, um, keep them separate because they will be different in coloration. Okay. All right, Melandri says, think with beeswax in it. Well, then you can add some beeswax. I wouldn't go more than 10%. Um, and yeah, awesome. Any last questions before we wrap up? It's a good thing we've got electricity, right? Imagine having to work all day to, to make uh, enough money to, <laughs> to light your house, one candle at a time. 
it'll take you a week to light your house up and uh <laughs> or you'd have to smell like like the pig or or a um or the cow or the or the sheep down the road at the butchers in your home yeah great <laughs> all right but yeah one of the beauty, beautiful things about beeswax candles again that they don't smoke and they have the smell of a hive as well which is pretty cool obviously you can you can you can uh put essential oils in there if you want to like citronella and stuff but i don't normally do that i just leave it uh plain and the light and the flame from from the bee, beeswax candle is also pretty awesome it's really bright and really quite calming nice one all right guys um thanks for joining us tonight we'll see you next week same time um next week tanya what are we talking about next week you've got the schedule what was the subject for next week i'm trying to remember <laughs> we'll have to tell you on the group <laughs> <laughs> all right well anyway i can't remember either that's why i was asking you <laughs> i'll look, go look hey i think it was uh we were talking about oh wasn't it earning income earning oh, yes. income that's on a on right. a on a homestead there we go we How could we about, forget? Yes, yes, that's right. But we were, I, I, I wasn't sure because I remember us talking about mushrooms. Yes. And then we changed our mind. Because yes. we can talk about mushrooms while talking about how to earn income on your homestead or at home or whatever the case is. Exactly. Right? About just being self-sufficient, homesteading yes. and gardening. There we go. You got that right. Beekeeping <laughs> as well. All right. All right. Thanks okay. for joining us, guys. See you next yeah. week. To it's going to be a good one next week. I'm yeah. going to tell you how I earned um, five hundred dollars in eight days. How's that? Catching. Catching. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> On my homestead. Okay, guys. Bye. Bye, awesome. right, guys. <laughs> Take it easy. Okay, and thanks for joining us again. And uh, we'll see you next week, same time. Bye, right, guys. Bye. Oh, Janine. Okay. I think she had a question.